We've only got a couple of more <clears throat> minutes to go, but sadly, that's all we need to discuss immuno oncology <laughs> in pancreas cancer. If you look at you know the other ones, that's all they talk about. Um, we save it for an afterthought in some ways. You know, uh, Allison. I you know I when I when the MSI story came out. Um, one of the advocacy groups puts on their website, you know, a new drug for pancreas cancer, which I felt was, uh, they only stayed up a day or so before we asked them to take it down. But, um, so, but MSI does occur in pancreas cancer. It's not I have, common. I've never seen one, actually. So we have one. <laughs> and then I think there were eight on Dung's study that uh -huh. had in yeah, the overall yeah. panel. That, and there so was I've about seen, an 80% response, response rate. Do you have I've one? Seen, you've three, had or, one? Three, or, three or four. Three or four? <laughs> <laughs> three for sure. I can't remember if I had before. Which side in New York does it? Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, a little one. cluster. So uh, one, one was a Lynch syndrome, and two okay. were sporadic. We had no elderly. One was an 84-year-old woman. Yeah. Well, you know, when I think about NTRAC, I think about MSI, these are rare events. The challenging question I ask myself is if I didn't have tissue, would I biopsy a patient just for those two assays? Because if they're positive, it could, could be transformative. Well, I think if they had a family history yeah. suggestive of a yeah. strong cancer family history, but if, it was, if this is a one-off cancer I, and the chance of you finding MSI high is, or even high TMB, I think is. is I mean, the uh, rates so are incredibly low. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but incredibly it is low. being um, tested on some of the liquid biopsy tests. Now. So I did recently diagnosed a patient through a liquid biopsy of MSI high. Very cool. So this is, you know, so it's worth looking if you can. I think we're all in agreement there. You'll never find the Willy Wonka golden ticket if you don't buy some chocolate bars, right? <laughs> so you have to open uh, the chocolate bars. Uh, anything new anybody's got in the IO space combinations that we're starting to see some, some benefit? Right, so I think it's all <clears throat> one of the potential problems, you know, when I show this immune, so a lot of patients obviously do come to us say, you know, I want immunotherapy, and then we have to explain they to them. Say they all say that. <laughs> we have to explain to them about what, what yeah. it means, and, and, and uh, really the immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, you know, the response rate is 0% as single agent pancreatic cancer. You cannot go lower, lower than 0%, so that's the... And if in, you find in, one, it's probably because they're MSI high. <laughs> MSI high, yeah, you, need to, you haven't looked hard enough, you're right, you're MSI high. So I do think, though, if we try to, again, make a cold tumor heart, and how do we do it? So. Uh, moving the macrophages from M2 to M1. There's a lot of literature in that, so we have a uh, recently concluded trial, second line, in with a CSF1R agent, um, uh, uh, clonally stimulating factor one. You study with that combination. So no. you know, uh, so that's an uh, agent. Uh, there's uh, there's data from you know from Ball's institution about uh, RIP1 kinase uh, inhibition, and that can be. Uh, that's also so. I think I think we are making strides in it. So I, I do think we just need to keep on looking and keep on doing and putting more patients on trials and maybe earlier on, not when they're in third line and they've got a low albumin and they're getting taps and then you're putting them on because a lot of those patients don't get through the first month of clinical I, trials. I think once you find it, it'll be obvious. But one of the challenges is that there have been a lot of negative trials that have not been reported. Right. In, in immunotherapy and pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And so, o for teners, O and, for 20ers. And, yeah. and we just don't know. Yeah. So I think at this point, we just don't have it. There's okay. the also 91.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
want everyone to know that there is treatment and they have to get treatment. And it, we are working day and night to get better treatments and we will get there. We still have a huge way to go. But if it's someone tells you, a physician tells you, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you, get your affairs in order, we, we can't make a difference, that's not true. And you have to find another doctor because we do have treatments and like Paul said, we should use them. And make sure that your family knows also about this disease that you have because it could be genetic. Yeah, I think people always ask me, that, how can you do pancreatic cancer? It's, it's tough, but I think that's the great thing about it is that there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. There's so much we can use to move the needle. The patients are amazing. Their families are amazing. They know they're faced with a tough diagnosis. They show up trying to say, you know, we want to go on a trial. We want to do something about this disease. So I think we really need to, as we've all said, just these get more patient or clinical trials. I really think we're at the tip of the iceberg. There's so many new agents being tested for the first time I've seen the last three or four years at pharma, other these things. There are things like Precision Promise, which is coming from BANCAN, that people are really investing. I just think we need smarter trials. We do 1,000 patient trials in pancreatic cancer. That is, that is not the right way to do the trial. I mean, that's a lot of wastage of patient resources patient's time, so I think we need smarter trials, we need more adaptive designs to get the answer early. I think that's where the real, that's where we really move the needle in this that's disease. That's terrific, you guys are awesome, and we wanna thank you guys for joining us today, and hope you found this OncLive Peer Exchange discussion on pancreatic cancer to be useful and informative.